It's two minutes of Torah. This year is entitled Shemitah. Is it a mitzvah on the person, the gavra, on the land, the chefza? Sounds like a very, very basic question. We all know that one cannot plow during Shemitah, one cannot plant during Shemitah, one cannot prune the trees during Shemitah. Is it that I cannot do all of these different prohibitions? Now, let's say I see someone doing it on my field. Well, it's, I'm not doing anything. There's no I said that I'm involved in and therefore it would be all right. Or no, I have to make sure that my land actually rests itself. Yes, in addition to not plowing and not planting and not pruning, I have to make sure that my land rests. And it seems to be from the Pasuk that it's just the case. Because the Pasuk says, Vishafta Haaretz, the land shall rest. So what does it mean the land shall rest? Maybe it just means the flip side of all the negative uh, the halachot, the prohibitions. I, I cannot uh, plow, I cannot plant, I cannot prune, and then naturally the land is going to rest. It doesn't mean to teach me that uh, I can't let someone else work on the land. And actually there's a machlok, is an argument among the commentaries, well, the Ibn Ezra seems to say that no, the land itself has to rest, I should not let others work on my land, and Chasrinos openly says this. And others uh, seem to say that no, the halach is simply, I have an, a prohibition to do uh, the pruning and the planting, and by me following those prohibitions, then I fulfill the mitzvah of Veshavta Haaret, and if someone happens to be working on my land, that's not my violation of Veshavta Haaret. We have a case on Shabbat. Shabbat, you have all the different prohibitions. You cannot go ahead and do this malach and that malach, all the different malachot. And then you have uh, Tishbo, you rest, and the rest is the flip side. By abstaining from all the different malachot on Shabbat, then naturally I have the mitzvah of Shvita, of resting as well. Over here, according to Menachas Kimach and others, no, the, the, the mitzvah of Shatarat is an addition to the Lotaseh. There's a whole new halach that's introduced, which is I have to make sure that my land is resting. It's very interesting. Uh, see Pesa Frank, he has a question where a person is not planting seeds directly. Rather, he has a machine, which is relatively new, 60, 70 years ago, that he walks with the animal, and then the uh, seeds will naturally come out from behind the wagon. So you're not really doing the planting. It's called grama. It's indirect. So maybe he says, in terms of the technical prohibition of planting, well, we always have to look into the halacha of grama. In all areas, I mean, every person has a lotase, a prohibition. What if he does it indirect grama? It's not direct from his actions. How do you relate to that? A person's opening up the cover he has on a sukkah, and there's rain on the cover, and then it comes off, and it goes onto his porch, and eventually it makes its way into his garden. That's grama. So is that considered watering if it's Shabbat or Yom Tov or not? So we always have to look into grama and say, is that when you do something grama indirect, is that considered as if you're doing the prohibition itself? And he says, even if it's not the case, and when you do the planting in this indirect manner, he says, still it may be a problem because even if you're not considered to be doing the action of Zoraya when it's Karama, still, maybe there's the other prohibition of Vishav Taha Aretz, the land has to rest. And you have to make sure that your land rests, even be if you are uh, avoiding the specific activity of planting. So, Lamaisa, uh, practically speaking, many posts are stringent that uh, you should make sure that your land rests, and therefore what you have is the prohibition to do all the specific malachot on Shemitah, and then you also have the halacha of Vishavta Haaretz, your land resting. Shalom.